everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. Thank you for coming back. I've got a couple of things to talk to you about today. I'm going to show you what came in the March Sew Holy Jane box and I'm also going to talk to you about some things that I've been making and some plans that I've got for the rest of this month. So as you'll know if you've watched my other videos, I have been subscribed to Sew Holy Jane subscription boxes for I think around a year, almost a year, and I get the mini box once a month and that costs £20 and in that you get a selection of things including a metre of fabric, you get some sweets, which are always welcome, um, you get a magazine, you get some other notions like maybe buttons, zips, elastic, ribbon, that sort of thing. and. Do you get anything else? Oh, and you get three fat quarters of coordinating fabric. So every month has a theme and this month's theme is over the rainbow. So I was really delighted when I opened the box and that was the theme that jumped out from the cover of the magazine. So I'll show you that now. You can see there it's got the rainbow thread running through it and over the rainbow. I love anything rainbow related. I love the colours that are so bright and happy and make me smile. So. I'll show you the magazine first. It's issue four, so this is only a, quite a recent thing that Haley's been doing, but it's fantastic. So as always, we've got our little introduction, talking about the fabrics that are in this month's box, what you can do with them. You've got some ideas here for things you can make with the fat quarters. So every month you get three, four or five fat quarters in your box, depending on which level of subscri subscription you've got. And here's just some lovely ideas of things that you could make with them. So we've got cushions, which I've done, pocket lining, which I've also done, peg bag, haven't done that and I'm not sure if I will, purely because I don't think I get much use out of it. We use a tumble dryer most of the time, don't get much decent weather to hang stuff out on the line. Door stop, which again I haven't made but I may do that, and zipper pouch, now I make lots of those. I make them for makeup bags, pencil cases, that sort of thing. So definitely would recommend making those with your fat quarters. There's an interview with the designer of the pattern that's in the luxury box and this month it's Joan who owns and runs Pipe Dream Patterns. Now I've made one Pipe Dream Patterns garment before and that was the Willow overalls, the wide-legged purple overalls that I showed you in my 2018 makes video and that's an example of them there as well. So yeah, I'm not sure which pattern it was that came in the luxury box, but I'm sure it was a good one. Then we've got an interview with a subscriber and this month it's the lovely Michelle who I follow on Instagram and she makes lots and lots of beautiful things. And this is one example, which is using that lovely black and yellow ITY jersey that came in the box a couple of months ago and she's made the Lucida dress by the Friday Pattern Company which I've made once before but she's hacked it to be a maxi which just looks absolutely lovely so that's a great interview to inspire you. Then we've got an interview with a creative who's collaborated with Hayley on this box and it's Emma who is on Instagram as M Makes and Bakes and she designed a patch to go into the classic and the luxury box, which I didn't get unfortunately. I am thinking about maybe upgrading to the classic box because I do feel like I miss out a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Some months I'm not bothered, but other months I think, mm, I would have loved one of those patches. <laughs> then we've got this now regular feature, which is Kate and Rachel from The Fold Line talking about some of their favourite patterns that you could make with the fabric in this month's box. So you've got the Kilo Wrap Dress, you've got the Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen and the Lyra Top by Afternoon Patterns. Then we've got a Make of the Month, so every month Hayley chooses a Make of the Month from, I guess from Instagram. If you share your makes on Instagram, Hayley would see them. And this month it's a wrap dress made by Amy. And again, this jersey came in I think the luxury box. Yeah, it would have come in the luxury box because I didn't get that fabric. It's gorgeous though. And then we've got Harriet as always. So Harriet, the little dressmaker on Instagram who makes something with the fabric every month for Hayley and writes a blog post for her. And she's used last month's fabric, which was the blue chambray. I haven't used that yet, but she's made a pair of trousers with it. 
so that's really interesting. And then we've got some of Hayley's favourite things at the back, including this book, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I've read that, would highly, highly recommend it. And obviously the gorgeous Gabby and Megan who do Stitches Brew podcast. They've had a little bit of a break for a while because Gabby's expecting a baby and Megan's obviously got a young baby. So they've had a bit of a break for a while from the podcast, but they actually came back with an episode a couple of weeks ago. So if you haven't listened to that, I would recommend checking it out. So yeah. That's a magazine. If I do look down at all during this video, it's because Sam set up his iPad underneath the camera so that I can check that everything's in frame. So if you see me looking down, that's what it is. I'm gonna have a little cup of tea, as always. This time I've got peppermint tea. I love peppermint tea. I find it very soothing, calming, and delicious. Right, so let's see what else was in the box. So the sweet treat was, obviously, had to be rainbow drops they're so gorgeous these are they take me back to my childhood really i haven't had them for a long time they're basically sugar coated puffed maize maize and rice but they're gorgeous rainbow colors so obviously very appropriate for the box this one there's some glass headed pins which have multicolored glass heads <laughs> so i can see why Haley's chosen those to fit in with the rainbow theme there are, in this lovely little box, uh, this isn't a box, what is this? Bag. In this lovely little paper bag, we have got some buttons. Let's see if I can show you them. And obviously they're in different colours. So we've got some pinky red. Ooh, lovely lilac. Louise Carmichael, who is part of the Tilly team. She loves lilac and it always makes me think of her. <laughs> I also love lilac. One of my favourite colours. We've got some pale blue and darker blue and some red. So yeah, some gorgeous buttons. There are eight in total. So they'll be perfect for adding to something. Then we've got the fat quarters this month, which are super cute. And here they are. So we've got this one with the spiral patterns on. We've got this one with clouds and hot air balloons on. <laughs> don't know where to go <laughs> this way <laughs> clouds and hot air balloons and then this one which has got the hot air balloons again but it's got unicorns actually and little bears and oh the unicorn is actually attached to the hot air balloon very cool <laughs> super cute so I think that would be perfect for making something for a child probably so I'll have a little think about what I could do with those, but I'll definitely be using them soon. They're very cute and obviously all work perfectly together. And then the fabric is stunning. Now, when I first opened it, I thought, I don't really know what I'm going to make with it, but it really appealed to me because I'm a bit of a hippie at heart. I've always been into sort of folk music and folk festivals and sort of flowers in my hair, that hippie sort of vibe. And this just, reminded me of sort of tie-dye and that sort of hippie vibe. <laughs> so it's this stunning and bright and vibrant cotton batik fabric. So I get a metre of it in my box. So it may be that I make a top possibly for the folk festival that I go to in the summer, which is Fairport's Cropperty Convention. If you haven't heard of it before, go and check it out because the lineup this year is awesome. It always is, but this year is particularly good. It's got people like Frank Turner on the lineup. So yeah, it's gonna be a good one. But this is just, look at all the colors in that and the floral print, it's absolutely stunning. So yeah, I think I'll make some sort of top or maybe a bag. I think that would be nice. So yeah, absolutely love that as well. And then you get some of the thread as well to match. So yeah, loved that box as always. I love getting it, opening it, seeing everything that's in it. I like checking out the So Hayley Jane hashtag on Instagram to see what other people are doing with their fabric. And yeah, if you don't already subscribe, I'll leave the link below and I would recommend it because it's a lovely little treat that comes through your letterbox every month. Well, not doesn't come through your letterbox, it gets delivered by the post person <laughs> every month. And yeah, why not treat ourselves and get a little surprise that's all on that matter. 
So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today is the things that I've been making that fit in with a certain theme and the theme that I want to talk about is Sewing Metallic March. So if you don't know already, if you don't follow me on Instagram or if you haven't watched my earlier videos, you might not know, but I, alongside two other ladies, Keely and Samantha, am running a sewing challenge this year. It's a monthly challenge, so there's a different theme every month. The overall title of the challenge is called Sewing Patterns and Prints. So it's to encourage people to showcase gorgeous printed fabrics to support our lovely mainly ladies that sell gorgeous fabrics in our sewing community and they set up their own businesses and yeah to show support for them by keeping on buying their gorgeous fabric but also then to make them into beautiful garments so february was sewing floral february which was a great success and then march is sewing metallic march so we're asking people to make something using metallic fabric or fabric with a bit of a sparkle or sheen or some sort of metallic element and share it on Instagram. I'm sorry if you're not on Instagram then you won't be able to take part but what we ask you to do is share your make, your garment, to tag myself, Keely and Samantha's Instagram profiles all in and I'll link those down below and also to include the hashtags sewing patterns and prints and sewing metallic march. So I thought I'd show you a couple of things that I've made so far. Obviously I can't enter and win any prizes, but I'm still making things that fit the theme to promote the theme. And I'll show you a couple of things I've made so far and then also some plans that I'm gonna try and squeeze in for the rest of the month. I will mention there are some fantastic prizes up for grabs. Every month we have three prize bundles, which are drawn at random. So at the end of the month, all of the people that entered and tagged us and used the correct hashtags, they go into a prize draw and three names are drawn out at random and they win some lovely prizes. So if I can remember rightly, this month we have got some gorgeous sparkly Lurex sweatshirt fabric from First for Fabrics with matching thread. We've got a PDF pattern of your choice from Tilly and the Buttons. We've got the amazing new pattern from Coco Wawa Crafts, which is the maple dress and it's gorgeous. I definitely want to make one. We've got a 20 pound voucher from Minerva Crafts, a 20 pound voucher from the lovely Joy of Pink Coat Club and a 20 pound voucher from Pin and Sew. So lots of amazing prizes. Also worth mentioning is that every time you enter, so you can enter as many times as you want, as many months as you want, Every time you enter, that gets you one entry into the grand prize draw, which will be drawn at the end of the year. And we have the most incredible sponsors on board for that. We've got some amazing prizes. We've got prizes from people like Guthrie and Garney, First for Fabrics, Lamarzi Fabrics, all sorts. We've got so many prizes. We've got a sewing retreat as part of the grand prize draw. It's just, yeah, we've got a lot going on. So enter, enter, enter as much as you can and you will be more likely to win some of the prizes at the end of the year. Thank you to everyone that's entered so far and hopefully you're enjoying the challenge and it's inspiring you and you can search for the hashtags on Instagram and see what other people are making. So I'll show you what I've made. I'll put pictures in for the first couple of things that I've made and then I'll show you the plans that I've got for the rest of the month. Hopefully, if I can fit them in. So the first thing that I made was a Nina Lee Southbank sweater, surprise, surprise. So I used this gorgeous, super cozy Atelier Brunette French Terry, which I bought from Guthrie and Garney. Well, I actually got it as a present for Christmas. Um, my mum and Nana gave me some money to buy fabric with for Christmas, and this was one of the purchases that I made. So it's so cozy. It's a stunning, really dark background and then gold little flecks all over, and it's just so nice and it feels amazing inside. So as you can see, I made the sweater dress from Nina Lee, which I've made a few times now, as you'll know if you follow me on here and on Instagram. And I made no changes to it. Yeah, so the last one I made, I made a size 14. So the previous ones I've made in a 14, just so the more slouchy and baggy and comfortable. But this time I did decide to size down. So I've cut the pattern to a size 12 now and I think it's perfect. So I'm thinking of taking the pockets out and actually cutting them out and just 
sewing down the side seams if that would work I'm not sure just purely because I feel like they stick out a little bit because the fabric's a bit thicker than perhaps other fabrics I've used before on this same pattern I feel like they stick out a little bit so it's not as a smooth outline down my hips so yeah I am considering that but let me know what you think if it's a good idea or if that would be an absolute disaster <laughs> the second garment that I've made for sewing metallic march is my first blog post for pin and sew so Aga asked me if I would make the march garment for her blog and if it could be a metallic fabric to fit in with our sewing metallic march theme and I knew exactly which fabric I wanted to choose it's this is absolutely wonderful cotton jersey and it's a navy background with white and silver sort of de galaxy design like a galactic design all over and it's so beautiful so I got two meters of that and I wanted to make the Tilly and the Buttons Freya dress but not just the standard Freya dress I wanted to change it up a little bit and I wanted to try a hack that I'd seen again on Louise I've mentioned her before so Louise Carmichael I'll link her uh, Instagram profile down below and she had made a gathered skirt version of the Freya dress and I knew that I loved the way it looked on her and I really wanted to try that so I did I followed the instructions on the Tilly blog where she teaches you how to make a gathered skirt version of the Agnes and it's exactly the same principle basically you just measure all I did on the pattern pieces for the bodice front and back was measure down however far I wanted it to come down and added a bit on for seam allowance so I wanted mine to the gathered skirt to start sort of just above my waist so I measured down I can't remember what it is off the top of my head but I've written it in a lot of detail in the blog post it's on the pin and sew website so I'll link that below so yeah I measured that down folded the pattern piece back and cut the bodice pieces up to that point then I took my hip measurement multiplied that by 1.5 which is what Tilly suggests on her blog and then I halved that to give me the width of each rectangle that I needed to cut for the skirt so you basically cut two rectangles the width which is half of 1.5 of your hip measurement and then the length is entirely up to you so I just held a tape measure against myself and decided how long I wanted it to be and I made it a little bit longer because I knew that obviously I could just hem it and take a bit off and I'm really really pleased with the result it came together really quickly really easily and I love it ah oh, one other thing I haven't actually mentioned I added pockets to it now I can't remember if Louise had pockets on her version I don't think she did but if she did I'm sorry I have, I'm not a revolutionary <laughs> I haven't come up with this idea myself if Louise already had them but I just can't remember and yeah I just decided to add pockets because pockets are essential so I took my pocket pattern piece from the Needle East Southbank sweater and I cut out four of those again I used a tape measure to measure down sort of how far I wanted them to be on the skirt and I simply inserted them using the same method for the Southbank sweater and yeah came together brilliantly so hope you like seeing the pictures but also I'll leave the link down below and I'd love you to go and read my blog post because I do go into a lot more detail about the making process and there's a few more pictures in there as well right so I'll show you now the fabrics that I've got for the rest of Metallic March I don't believe that I'll get all of these done this month because there's only two weeks of the month left and I've got my dressmaker's ball outfit to make still but I'm going to show you them anyway and see what you think I need a couple of ideas for one of them and you might be able to help me so some of these fabrics you'll actually recognize I showed you them I think in my fabric haul that I filmed in January so I think that might have been my very first video I think I showed you three out of these four fabrics so you will recognize them so the first one is this lovely brocade which it's got these gorgeous florals all over in pinky and blue shades this was from Sewisfaction I believe I bought a meter no hold on yeah I've only bought a meter of that but that is ample to make a skirt which is what I want to do with it now I had been planning on making the Delphine skirt from Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons first book love at first stitch but I've since been swayed by the new pattern release from Nina Lee 
So this is one of the two patterns that Nina Lee patterns released recently and the skirt, the Camden skirt, is just gorgeous. I mean, I love them both. I love the pinafore and I love the skirt, but I'm planning on making the skirt out of that brocade fabric. So yeah, that's plan number one. Plan number two is the Avid Seamstress Day Dress. Now, this came onto my radar because of Emma, who is the zipper foot, who I've mentioned before, and she's made a couple of these now. One of them, which was just, I mean, they were both beautiful, but one of them in particular, I'll put a photo in for you to see, is just absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I loved that dress when I saw it on Emma. And the fabric that I've got to make it with is from Guthrie and Garney, and it's this. I can't exactly, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll link it down below if they've still got any, I'm not sure they do. But you can see those lovely dots all over. We've got pink, green metallic, gold metallic, blue, just absolutely gorgeous on a really dark, it's sort of a navy and black background a mix. And then the reverse of the fabric. Oh, look at that. How gorgeous is that? So I will be looking to incorporate both sides of the fabric into the dress. But yeah, I definitely want to get that made. I, I would love to get it made before I go to New York because I think that would be a really, really lovely dress to wear you know, when we go for rooftop cocktails in New York, I think that would be a really special dress to wear. So I think I'll try and get that done before New York, which gives me about three weeks. <laughs> Wish me luck. All right, so the next two fabrics I'm gonna show you are fabrics that I don't have firm plans for and maybe you might have suggestions. The first one is this incredible, let's get it the right way up, <laughs> this incredible clock print fabric which is from Selkie Patterns. Now if you don't know Selkie they are quite a new pattern company run by Alex and Caroline and they have got one pattern out so far which is the London blouse and skirt, blouse and dress and skirt and they have also released some fabrics that they have hand painted, they've designed and hand painted and then had made. Now one of their main passions is sustainability and making sure everything's eth ethically sourced. So they're, you know, really, what's the word? Passionate <laughs> about all things environmentally friendly and sustainable, etc. So this fabric, beautiful blue background, gorgeous hand painted clock towers with gold polka dots all over and I absolutely adore it. So I think I've got a metre of this. I would love to make a skirt with it. I'm thinking of the Delphine skirt from Tilly and the Button's first book, which is called Love at First Stitch. I think that would work because it's quite plain and simple. It doesn't have anything that would distract from that lovely design. It wouldn't be interrupted in any way with pockets or anything. So that's sort of my plan at the moment. But if you've got any other suggestions of skirts that would work for this, then I would love to hear them. It's quite a stable, structured fabric. I think it's a cotton, I can't remember how it was described on the website, but yeah, I love it. It's so unique as well, really, really special. So I'll link to Selkie down below and you can go and check out their beautiful fabrics. I've recently pre-ordered their new design. The pre-orders are closed now, so I'm afraid you won't be able to order any yourself, but it's a beautiful design so I'm very excited to receive that fabric. They take pre-orders so then they can order just the right amount, hence the sustainability and non-waste. So yeah, there's that one. And then the last fabric I've got to show you is a cotton jersey. It was bought from Lamazi Fabrics. It was actually bought by my lovely mum for my birthday in December. I've got a meter and a half of it. It's this stunning geometric gold design on this beautiful navy background. Now, I adore it, but I just can't, I can't come to a decision about what to make with it. I've got one thing in mind, which is the knot dress from Named Clothing, which is in the Break in the Pattern book. And it's on, let's have a look. It's around page 72, I believe. So it's this dress here, lovely, simple t-shirt type dress with the knot detail at the front. Now I really, really like that, but I'm just not 100% sure. I saw a beautiful 
dress made with this fabric on Instagram this week. I'll put a picture of it in here. It's Sam, whose account is called The Rural Sewist, and she's made the gorgeous Susie dress, which is a new pattern from Athena Kaku. And I'm sure you'll agree that Sam looks absolutely amazing in that dress. So that's another option, although that would just be copying Sam, so perhaps not. I also love the Kilo Wrap dress from Named Clothing, but I don't think I would have enough fabric for that. So if you've got any ideas of a lovely dress pattern that I could use for this cotton jersey, then please let me know. So I think that's everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to comment down below and liking my videos and subscribing. If you don't already subscribe, I would love you to. And you could even hit, there's a no notification bell somewhere around. If you click that, then you'll be notified every time I release a new video. So I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, week, whatever it is, and I hope you're getting some sewing time in. Thank you for watching and listening to my thoughts and rambles today. <laughs> See you again soon. Bye. I'm saying gorgeous a lot again. Need to stop that.